Let's look at another problem. All right. Um, here we have copper sulfide plus copper oxide goes to form copper and SO2. So again, we want to balance the equation. So what we do when we're balancing these type of equations, again, we're going to set up our grid. We're going to look at our reactant side and what's on our product side. So here we have our copper. In this instance, um, copper is set up. I have two copper here. I have two copper here, which gives me a total of four copper on the reactant side. And on the product side, copper is only equal to one. So I want to balance them, so I multiply the reactant side times four. I put a four here, a coefficient of four. So my copper are now balanced. Look at my sulfur. Sulfur is equal to one. On the reactant side, sulfur is equal to one. So it's balanced. On the reactant side, I'm looking at my oxygen. Oxygen is equal to one over here. Oxygen on the product side is equal to two. So I have two over here. So these are not balanced. So in order for me to balance them, I need to use a two multiply. The common denominator between one and two is two. So if I place a two in front of the copper oxide, that will cause my oxygens to be balanced. However, in the process of balancing my oxygens, I have unbalanced my copper. So now I have a total of 2 plus 2 times 2 gives me a total of 4. So 4 plus 2 gives me 6. So now I have 6 copper on the reactant side, and I only have 4 copper here so I can erase this and simply put a 6. So when the equation is complete I'm going to have Cu2S plus 2Cu2O which goes to 6 copper plus SO2. So just to do a quick check, let's go back and make sure everything is balanced. We have our product, we have our reactant side, we have our product side, the number of copper. We have two copper here, plus two times two gives me four, which gives me a total of six on the reactant side. On the product side, I have six copper, so copper here is equal to 6. On the reactant side, sulfur is equal to 1. Sulfur is equal to 1 on the product side. Um, oxygen is equal to 2. On the reactant side, I have a 2. And this is an oxygen here, so that's 2 oxygens. And on my sulfur side, oxygen is equal to 2. The equation is balanced. Alright, let's take a look at another one. Here, the same concept, what we want to be able to do is we want to balance the chemical equation. So we set up our little grid, look at our product side, we look at our reactant side, and our product side, and we go through each element. So for tungsten, which is W, we have one on the reactant side, and we have one on the product side, so they're balanced. Carbon, carbon is equal to one on the reactant side, carbon here is equal to 1. So, so far everything has been pretty balanced. Here, oxygen is equal to 2. Well, on this side of the equation, on the product side of the equation, oxygen is equal to 3 
plus 2 gives me a total of 5. Now, when you have a problem like this, you know that um, there's a problem. In order for you to balance this, the best thing is to take this oxygen and divide it by 2, which would give you a total of 2.5 times 2 would give you a total of 5. So if you take your reactant side and multiply it times 2.5, it will allow you to have a total of 5 oxygens. So you'll have an equation that looks like this. W C plus 2.502 goes to W O3 plus CO2. However, whenever you have a decimal point, you don't have a whole number, you have a decimal point in the problem, you cannot leave it like that. You have to make it a whole number. So in this instance, what you have to do is take the entire equation and multiply it times 2. So you'll have 2 WC plus 502 goes to 2 WO3 plus 2 CO2. Now the equation should be balanced once you do that. I have 2 W here. Let's just do a quick check. I have reactant. I have products. I have 2 W here on the product side. I have 2W on the reactant side. I mean on the product side. 2W on the reactant side, 2W on the product side. I have 2 carbon on the reactant side, 2 carbon, 2 carbon on the product side. So that's good. I have a total of 10 oxygens on the reactant side. 5 times 2 gives me 10. On the product side I have 3 times 2 which gives me 6 oxygens and 2 times 2 is 4 so I have a total of 6 plus 4 which is 10 which means I have 10 oxygens on the product side so the equation is balanced alright let's take a look at something a little bit more complex now, when we're looking at these types of problems, the thing that we want to do is, because this problem has polyatomic ions, we want to try to rewrite it so that we have polyatomic ions on both sides of the equation so 